yeah, okay. Here we go now. We've seen every facet of everyone's favorite friend. She's the Emmy winner, the trendsetter, and the better half of a hot Hollywood couple. Now, there's just one more leg on this backward journey to the heart of Jennifer Aniston. The part where this awkward East Coast girl begins her quest. Here we go. Backspin to Jennifer, teenager. Any psychologist will tell you that personality traits are formed at childhood. It's time to examine the early years that shaped Jennifer's drive to succeed. Let's start with Mommy Dearest. I wouldn't be surprised if Nancy did lean very heavily on Jennifer to be her husband, to be her friend, to be her confidant. Nancy Aniston was this model slash actress, which of course means struggling actress. A young and vulnerable Jennifer Aniston is being raised by a smothering mother. With her career winding down and Jennifer's winding up, a resentment is brewing. Her mother probably does hang on Jennifer's coattails a little bit. She knew best, but it seems like maybe she was always sort of strangely competitive. Things were better with mom when Jennifer was in her less threatening, awkward stage. Long before a confident Rachel Green strolled into Central Perk, an insecure Greek teenager struggled to find her identity. Growing up in New York City, Jennifer actually attended the fame school for the performing arts. She was sort of a different person back then. She remembers wearing a lot of eyeliner and she put on a mohawk. It was bad. No, it was my much worse hair in the 80s. And big, it was long and bushy and purple and bangs that started my hair. It's 1984 and Jennifer Aniston has bad hair and a bad attitude. The girl who would go on to be the most famous friend of them all is caught between fame and her family. Jennifer is a product of showbiz parent and she learns early on that isn't always easy. I have been in the business. I have been with her, her dad uh, during all his uh, years when he was struggling to, to get his own career going. Nancy's business wasn't booming. A B-movie slasher flick called The Ice House failed to get the attention of the Academy. Hello. Is this The Ice House? Well, this is Mrs. Wilson. I just wondered if you were open. We're giving a party tonight, and I thought I'd come over and get some extra ice. Get the ice cubes. Because she chose a profession that I knew a lot about and had been in myself, we were very, very tight in my guiding her career and my being there for her. Maybe that's why it was so important that Nancy made Jennifer her business. Jennifer was living with her mother on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Two women alone together, trying to make it in the world. Her mother was always giving her lots of advice. So all her energy goes into poor Jennifer. She needs to wear makeup, she needs to fix this, she needs to fix that, her eyes are too close together, she doesn't like her chin. All these things were constant, constant wear on her self-esteem. So you've been guiding this little child, you've been trying to get, get the child safely through um, <coughs> the formative years, and, and often we're not all wise enough to know that that's at a certain point that has to just stop. By holding on too tight, Nancy is losing her grip on her restless daughter. You dump a broad, you dump a broad. It's 1980, and John and Nancy Aniston are officially divorced. When the divorce happened to Jennifer, it was huge. The way Jennifer tells it, she remembers coming home from a birthday party when she was nine, and her mother told her that her father would be away for a while. Can you imagine just coming home as a nine-year-old kid from a party and finding out that your dad left your family? After that time, she didn't actually see her dad again for a whole year. Now we see why friends are so important to Jennifer after being deprived of the benefits of a family unit. Years later, when she finally found it, she held on to it like a child. One kids always have harder upbringings, at least I did. Jennifer Aniston is a lost little girl, learning that nothing is forever. The struggles of her parents flips a switch. She would rise above it all. She now knows what she doesn't want to be. Taking control is her only shot at happiness and success. She won't just have any man in her life, 
she'll have the sexiest man alive. She won't just work on any sitcom, she'll work on one of the greatest sitcoms in history. She won't just be a movie actress, she'll be a movie star. So now we close the circle and zoom forward to where we started. Jennifer is facing the biggest challenge of her career, life without her friends. And while she'll be rooting for Joey, don't expect a Rachel Green spinoff. She's calling the shots now, and she means business. On her latest film, the director was fired after Jennifer flexed some A-list muscle. She's got the power, clout, and cash to shape her own destiny. If big screen credibility is her goal, no one's gonna stop her from trying. Just in case, Jennifer and Brad formed a production company called Plan B. We are producing a couple about, we have about 17 projects in development. First probably will be Willy Wonka with Johnny Depp. And we all know what her pet project is, starting a family of her own. Are we gonna have babies yet? Well, yeah, that's what the year is sort of holding, I believe. Show's over. So, whoever she chooses to be, movie star, mega mom, media mogul, or all of the above, the sky's the limit. No one can say I'll never go back to doing that, ever. That would be silly, but for right now, I think, I feel like I've done it. I feel like I've spent 10 years, 15 years actually doing it, and I, I'm excited to kind of venture into this new arena and, and try this and, and producing and all of, and everything else that, that, I can, that I can try to uh, explore.